week's episode of The Happy Psychic, I am joined by Galliana Akin. Galliana is a soul contract reader and she creates these wonderful soul contract charts and provides information around them that really give a deep and meaningful interpretation of your own life experiences and it helps you view them from the soul's perspective in terms of what the soul had planned out whenever it was coming into this incarnation. So this is showing you where you're at currently and where you're heading at in the future. Welcome Galliana, it is very good to have you on the show. My pleasure and honor to be here with you. Thank you. I am incredibly excited because we are here to talk about soul contracts and you are a soul contract reader. So this is very much your area of expertise. And I know you've done a little bit of work on mine, but before we even get to that, can you tell me a little bit more about what even is a soul contract? For those of us who aren't aware, what what is a soul contract? Yes, yes, wonderful place to start. So the first thing I'll say is when we hear the term soul contracts, most people um, envision uh, a soul contract or a bond of some sort between two individuals, right? So what's my soul contract with my mom or what's my soul contract with my ex-husband, you know, right? We kind of think of it that way. And that is one way to look at it because we have a soul contract with pretty much every significant person in our lives. And sometimes people that are not even so quote unquote significant um, to have experiences with them. And then there's another way to look at soul contracts, uh, which is the area that I specialize in. And this is more about what is the soul contract that the soul has with itself before it reincarnates into any given life, right? Essentially, what is the purpose? What is the soul looking to accomplish? And this is my area of expertise. And this is essentially what I'm able to help people with is by taking their name, and we're going to get into this much more, but but I'll give you, you know, the nuts and bolts here, but I can look at somebody's name, um, decode the sound frequencies found within that name and based on the sound frequencies, um, see the karma that they brought in, uh, their unique talents, the goals, like what is the soul here to accomplish and ultimately what is the soul's purpose? What, What is the core existence of this reincarnation? Yeah, this is super interesting. So I'm a psychic medium and I'm clairvoyant. And whenever I'm doing readings for people, a lot of what I do is spiritual guidance and the soul contract comes up a lot. So first of all, I'm relieved that you have just described it exactly how I understand it as. But whenever spirit are showing me the soul contract, I literally see a contract. They will show me a contract. So if someone is asking me, for example, um, like, oh, you know, how many kids am I? going to have and they might I might see somebody looking through this contract and they might say it doesn't mention children so I'll know that they're not contracted to have children in that specific life Um, and I I'm just I just find it all fascinating I only really touch on that very briefly if I'm in a reading and it comes up so with your wealth of knowledge I'm just I have so many questions (laughs) I love love it you know because I think, well, not I think I know, but with your skill set, you being clairvoyant, you being a psychic medium, you're able to read the soul contract um, almost like from a different uh, view or perspective that I do. Because when I look at it, I don't actually see if they're contracted to have children or not. I may see if they're going to have fertility issues or I may see things of that nature. Um, but I think it's that it's that extra layer of psychic that you have. Yeah, I think you're able to go in and look deeper. And um, you know, with me, it's interesting because sometimes I can tell when my psychic kicks in, right? Because when I'm doing readings, I'm always using all my talents. But sometimes I'm like, ooh, like this is something different that's coming in for them. But sometimes it's like, Shh, don't you know? We're not saying this yeah. to them. So they'll ask me, well, is my is my soulmate? here is my am I you know all the questions that I'm sure that you get asked but you know for me I sort of lean back and say you know I'm here to empower you on your journey well, and I don't always use the word empower I mean it is what I'm doing is empowering them but my purpose with the readings 
is to help them wake up and remember who they are right it's not so much always about the details of the journey but for them to actually step in their divine purpose because are they here to be a catalyst for people yeah. are they here to um you know work through um uh you know being a warrior in one way or another um have a massive voice which and i'm actually speaking a little bit to yours right now because it's right in front of me <laughs> you know but these are parts of the energies i'm seeing in yours um but yeah, so just to distinguish a little bit as well between how you may read a soul contract and how I would read a soul contract. I love that you share that. I think that it's quite fascinating really for me to show me how the information can overlap. Like we, we could literally sit together with a potential, you know, client or customer who's come wanting a soul contract reading and you could get all of this information and be like, okay, so what, what else do you get around that? What do you get around this? And I, it's just how the two all work together. And I, I think it excites me a lot of how everybody's gifts all interlink as well and how, you know, there's no one person that necessarily has all of the answers but whenever we work together we can really create something that's quite profound for people in terms of knowledge yeah yeah no I, I agree with you and I've done that so one of my best friends is very psychic and she channels source and sometimes we do have the same client because you know we'll refer clients to each other and there's been times where you know, I'll say, well, here's what I see in the soul contract. And she's like, I can't believe you just said that because that's literally what I channeled in word for word. And I'm like, that is so exactly to your point. I'm like, that is so cool. Like, you know, I'm like channeling and I'm literally reading it based off the sound frequency. And she's getting the same exact information. So, mm -hmm. yes. And then that's, the, you know, to people like that, that stuff is so juicy, right? <laughs> and, and this is all based on our name, isn't it? Like the name that we have from birth, our birth name yeah yeah that's the bit that baffles me so does that mean then that we have chosen the name that we're coming into this life with if that connects in with our contract in that way yes yes absolutely so it's actually the soul that chooses the name and it's the soul's job to get it to the parents and it's the parents job to get it correct okay. so yeah, I mean, that, that's exactly how it works, because when the soul is in that, you know, life planning process before it reincarnates, it chooses the karma that it wants to work through. Um, like every all of it, honestly, I mean, the soul chooses the birthday, the, the parents, what it's going to look like. Right. I mean, you've I'm sure you've heard that before. And a lot of people. Not. So why wouldn't it also choose its name? Right. So yeah. the soul is really in charge of everything. And when you talk to parents, you often hear stories of how they came up with a name mm -hmm. you know so for me i heard my daughter's name two years before she was even conceived this i was at a women's conference and this woman got up on stage and she introduced herself her name was eris and she, she said hi my, you know, my name is eris and the moment she said that name i'd never heard it before but as soon as she said it it was just this like full-on knowing like you know the, the, my whole body just felt it gonna have a daughter and her name's gonna be Eris. Like it was I'm like, wow, right? So from that moment on I knew my baby girl's name was gonna be Eris. Like there was no question about it. Now I changed the spelling a little bit too. Cause I could feel like she I'm like mm, my daughter wanted an A name. Like I you know and again you can say that this is me being intuitive or you could say that every mother has some sort of intuition, right? And we can say all of the things. But usually um that's how the parents will get the names from the soul. Mm -hmm. I actually think, you know, we underestimate the amount of information that we get from spirit, even for those people who say, well, I'm not, I'm not a psychic, but, you know, I think we're all psychic. Spirit has the ability to get the information through to us. It may just come to us in a way that we don't realize has not come from us. Um, and I think that that's one of the important things I've learned on my journey. Yes, 100%. I, there are people that have, in their charts, they have this um, intuition frequency. It's, and it's strong intuition. You have it too, by the way. I mean, right next to your psychic frequency. But, and I'll ask them, I'll say, are you intuitive? And they're like, I don't think so. And I'm like, I, you probably are. I think you're just not realizing that you're using your intuition. I think you think it's coming from your brain. <laughs> when in reality, the information is coming from yeah. spirit. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And I say that more and more. Actually, the further I have come along my journey, the more I recognize that, you know, we, we think all of these different things are from our thoughts and 
there's so much of it I think that isn't you know but that's that's a whole diff- a whole other story a whole other story um so obviously we choose our name so from birth you can really pick that information apart now you talk about frequencies sound frequencies now whenever i looked at the chart to me it looked like numerology almost in a way because i knew that it was it was seemed to be like a lot of numbers i'm going to ch- i'm going to just share the chart actually um here as well so people can see what it looks like because it's based on this is it the star of david yeah is that yeah. right yeah the work of okay so this is obviously so this is obviously my birth name which is different to my name now because i've been married and divorced so um so we've got that and it's obviously we've got a couple of different things that are shown here i'm just going to try and um zoom that out a little bit so we can see so obviously whenever i was looking at this i seen all these numbers we've got all these different things here on the screen that and, um, you know, we've got spiritual goals, physical karma, spiritual karma, and all these numbers. So it would be really good to understand how how this works. And I appreciate this is going to be layman's terms because, you know, we're not specialists like you. But um, I want to be enlightened. And I am I'm just I'm so excited for this. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Me, too. I could talk about I, I, I was about to say I could talk about this all day long, but I do talk about this all day long, you know, and it, <laughs> So I'm, I'm like, is this really what I do, like, for a living? Like, this, this is the point I've reached in my life. And let me tell you, that was a journey. You know, that was a journey. I had to give up my whole other identity to be able to accept myself for who I am and step into this, which is yeah. um, the journey for many of us. Yes, I was reading because you were divorced. Was it a divorce that sort of kicked you off on your journey and sent you on this spiritual awakening and this soul development and spiritual development? Yeah, yeah, it was. Which, yeah, that was definitely. Which I bet was probably in your contract. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so how does this work? So yeah, let's talk about this and dig in. So the first thing, um, as I said earlier, I take the person's birth name, and the name, um, as you can see, right underneath the name, we have numbers, which is what you. Um, spoke with a type of numerology so you're correct this is a type of numerology but not the numerology that we think of in western society when we think of numerology but this pertains to sound frequency and there are five sacred languages that are pure vibration of source um hebrew which is the one i'm using here sanskrit hieroglyphics um a few others i don't quite remember them right now but they're all pure vibration of source and so when we convert the sound frequencies these are the numbers that we get um and then what i do is i take the sound frequencies and i put them around uh what this is a star of david well what is the star of david the star of david is a 2d um sacred geometry symbol to tetrahedron it's a merkaba right a light body vehicle um and there's i mean there's quite a bit that can be said about the Merkaba because that in itself is a, a sacred symbol um but yes that is what we're looking at and so the triangle that's facing down this is where i get all the physical aspects of your life physical karma physical talents physical goals and when i say physical i don't mean your body necessarily i mean your 3d world existence of just how you perceive the world like you just being born a little baby and coming into this human reality right that's what i mean by the physical essence um and we experience these frequencies very dominantly between the ages of zero to 35. around the age of 35 the frequencies found in the triangle that's facing up kick in okay um so around the age of and the reason it's 35 is because everything happens in seven year cycles so 35 is your fifth seven year cycle see how you're smiling you're like oh yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know what i was just thinking about the seven year itch <laughs> but yeah that is true like that is just a form of like a seven year cycle that we go through like even in the physical form the seven year cycle so that makes a lot of sense exactly. So as we approach 35, um, a lot of people will experience some life altering events, 
you know, some major life shifts, marriage, divorce, having children, car accident, career change, uh, maybe get, getting sick. I mean, it could show up in many forms, but essentially what it does, it sort of kicks you off into that next phase of your life, maybe the dark night of the soul, maybe, um, you know, everybody experiences a little bit differently, Yeah. but it's essentially when we start looking at life and questioning, okay, there's got to be more to this, you know, and for some, it happens a little bit earlier and for some, it happens a little bit later, but it's around that 35 ish mark point. So for me, my divorce came through a 34, right? And even though um, I knew that I was, I mean, I've always been intuitive. I, I just, from a young age, I was like, I think I, like, I, I realized that I feel things and maybe see things that other people don't. Um, but I never really did anything with it. And in fact, when I was married, I was very much more into my masculine, in, in my ego. And so I never explored these intuitive uh, you know, talents. It was, it really was put on the back burner. And what happens when we put our divine purpose on the back burner, you know, life sends us trauma to try to wake us up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, right. Cause that's what trauma is. It's like, wake up. Are you awake yet? No. Oh, here comes more trauma. Um, so after the divorce, I went on a healing journey, right. As many of us do, you know, which, you know, for me, it was very spiritual, just again, because that's who I've always been and always been drawn to that. And so I went on this massive healing journey. And what I discovered in that journey is, gosh, I have a lot to heal. (laughs) You know, a lot of it we don't even realize is um, that we carry these trauma wounds from childhood or whatever, and we just push it down. So on that journey, I discovered this work. And when I discovered this work, it was like, again, like when I heard my daughter's name, my whole body kind of like blew up. Same reaction when I saw this. It was like my whole body just blew up. Is this, is this an immense recognition? And every cell in your body is literally screaming, pay attention, pay attention. Because I've done this work in past lives. I've always worked with sound frequency, I believe. Um, well, I shouldn't say always, but I've had, you know, those those past lives that I can connect things to that, like, you know, healing with sound, working with sound. Like, this is my language. H- however, it, I don't even know what that language is, but sound is my language. So I understood this very quickly. And really leaned in into okay let's let's run with it so i went a little off track but but 35 was the age okay so for you or your audience listening you know think for yourself what happened around your age for your age around that time now when the frequencies in the triangle um that's facing up when they start to kick in um and, and these frequencies are the spiritual aspects right so spiritual karma spiritual talents, spiritual goals. This is your heart and soul desire. This is what your soul is here to like really focus on and do and accomplish. Doesn't mean that you will. Many of us don't. This is why we keep reincarnating, right? This is not a one and done kind of a thing, but you know, I think we're now actually, you know, stepping into the, the age of where people are working through their stuff and they are breaking generational trauma and a lot of healing is happening. So I think anything's possible, but that's a lot of what the triangle that's facing up is. Again, it's, it's that your inner world. And then ultimately in the middle, we have the soul destiny, which is the core purpose of this entire existence and all of this is literally derived just off of the sound frequency of your birth name i'm just my mind is blown i was actually watching a few of your videos on tiktok and i watched a few other things as well even on youtube and i found a forum online where people were talking about this and they were just they were just so mind blown at how accurate it was whenever they've had a reading or whenever they've done a reading for somebody and how it's just been so incredibly accurate. And I, I can't explain to you how it works. I, like, I don't know. It's the same with like, you know, tarot or psychic mediumship or clairvoyant. I don't know how it all works. I just know that it works, but I'm still never feel, I still never feel to be just amazed by something. Like I haven't, you know, although I, I hear about, a, you know, a lot of, um, soul contracts, you know, through my work, 
I've never experienced this before and I just think it's so phenomenal at how we can use this in order to help us navigate and navigate our path and understand ourselves better I think is the two big things that came from it for me yeah it's like having a roadmap of your life yeah yeah, yeah. it's like a, like a cheat sheet Yes. And you know, this whole contract, it never changes, right? Because when you come in for a psychic reading, I mean, you know this, based on your free will, the energy can change, things can change a little. I mean, it just, so I tell, because people say, well, if I come back to you in six months, is this going to be different? I'm like, no, it won't. (laughs) This is, well, this is your soul's divine purpose. This is not, um, this is not going to change. What may change is where you are working through the frequency because each frequency has a negative and a positive, you know? So, um, you know, for instance, for you, your, your, um, soul destiny is this nine, nine and the nine, I'll tell you, this is a dragon. This is the most powerful frequency in the entire modality. So powerful, but initially in life, you may have experienced that as maybe some sort of disempowerment. Yeah. And so, it's it where you are in life is so like you could be on different um size of the frequency okay and that's what changes but not the actual soul contract it's really interesting that you use the term dragon because um a dragon is actually uh like a spirit animal of mine um that has come up quite a few times on my journey this dragon so it's just funny that you use that term yeah it's it's there it's with you it's there with you that's why it keeps coming up you know these little synchronicities they're always little signs you know what i wanted to tell you also um why sound is so important um like because like, people are like how do you get this from my name so let me explain sound a little bit um gosh sound is just so extremely powerful and now there's more and more um information that's coming out um, that they're discovering on how powerful sound is. But I'm going to give you three simple examples to sort of drive this home, right? There's the big bang theory of how our universe was created. Bang, sounds, frequency. Okay, that's the scientific version. We all heard of it. Then there's the biblical version that we all heard of where it literally says in the beginning there was nothing until God started to speak things into existence so of all the ways god could create it's through sound right it's literally words you know and then we have the sound of creation which is the om symbol that you see in all the yoga stuff Mm -hmm. right that's the sound of creation so literally all around us any direction you look into the scientific the biblical or the spiritual we're being shown how powerful sound is Mm -hmm. so that's why it's so accurate is because the sound of your name it's it's like your soul's unique signature vibration that Mm -hmm. keeps emanating Mm -hmm. so what sort of things were you able to pick up from this then because obviously you read these day in day out this is very much like your life i'm really curious to know what sort of information can be picked up what information is picked up on mine obviously and also to see if there was things that you picked up on that connected into my life like as it is today you know were you able to see the level of my gifts for example and my spiritual connection in here yeah absolutely so i'll tell you see this 14 5 that you have sitting right at the top in the spiritual goals that's your psychic number okay so yes whenever i see that now it doesn't mean that anybody it doesn't mean that people that have this in their chart are psychic because i get a lot of people that have this and they're not or they're not connected or i you know i don't know but they would not refer to themselves as psychic however um you know me knowing that you are and seeing that 14 5 i'm like that's her psychic number right there like because so the five to break this down a little bit more the five is that extreme intuition okay right so and notice you have three fives because you have two fives in your spiritual talents right and our spirit so our talents are um you know kind of like you know quote unquote your god-given talents like like you're just born with this talent. So this tells me you were born 
extremely intuitive, extremely like with an open mind to the abstract, being able to grasp abstract things. I mean, it's just, you, you were born this way mm-hmm. when it comes to your talents. And so that's that extreme intuition. And then you couple that with the spiritual goals, 14, five, and that 14, that's a psychic mirror. So it reflects energy um, back and forth. So this tells me that you might also have a bit of intensity to you in your just personality. I don't know if you consider yourself intense or have intense relationships. Um, I would say that sometimes definitely people could say that about me. Maybe I'm not as self-aware as what I should be around that. I'm probably more aware now than what I used to be. But um, it is definitely something that was said about me for a long time before... Mm. I really recognize that myself. Okay. Okay. Well, see, there you go. And so, so the reason why that intensity sort of comes about is because it's the reflection of the mirror. So when you're around people, you have this way of showing them parts of themselves that they don't typically see. Mm-hmm. Right. And that can be intense. Like, you know, when you're looking in the mirror and seeing all the these dark parts of you, or you just have a way to go maybe a little deeper with people. Like one of my best friends has a 14, five and man, she can just go deep with me. And I'm like, how does she do that? You know, but it's just, it's just the energy that does it. So, um, and, and the thing is it's a two way mirror. So they reflect back to you. So you're just constantly reflecting when you're with people. And that's again, part of what could create some of that intensity, but it's again, just in its most basic form, that's, that's the psychic number. Now, the fives, they're very, very intuitive, but they're also very sensitive. And they can, um, initially in life, it tells me, I don't know, maybe you had a challenge speaking up or speaking your truth or standing up for yourself. Yes, <laughs> massively, massive. That has been one of my big lessons over this last few years, believe it or not. Um, that's been an incredible, that's probably been one of the things that have hindered me most in my life when I was growing up. Yeah, is the inability to, to speak up. And I see that in a few places in your chart. I see that in the fives, but I also see that in your physical karma, the 21-3, so the three, the keyword for three is communication. And so the fact uh, when you have this in your karma, so let's talk about karma for a moment. Mm-hmm. Well, karmic aspects in your chart, these are going to be the biggest challenges in life that you are here to overcome, right? So you know how when sometimes in life we have these patterns that just keep showing up. Um, I don't know, like maybe you're in the workplace and you keep getting this boss who just won't let you speak up. I don't know, just I'm using some random analogy. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's usually these karmic aspects that we carry that keep attracting situations that we have to work through to actually work through the karma. Because we're not here to suffer with our karma. We're here to actually work through it. Mm-hmm. So your 21-3 tells me that, again, challenge with communicating you know maybe you were somebody who would push things deep down into your internal canal and have a difficult time bringing uh, bringing it up so you know a few years ago if we met and i said well Gemma, how do you feel about xyz you might say i don't know have to think about it you know and because the threes oftentimes they push things so deep down that sometimes they really literally don't know what the hell they feel about something they do have to think about it and come back yeah you know i can actually really relate to that and i can see it in my daughter as well um that sometimes she isn't even aware of what she feels about something and i can i can just really see myself in her so yeah that's incredible that that actually came through yeah well she might carry uh this frequency as well oftentimes when i do family chart readings um, and what I do in those cases, I can put um, the name side by side, literally like in, in a column. And oftentimes I'll see the children have brought in the karma that the parents haven't worked through mm-hmm. yet. It's very funny that you mentioned that because I know one of the things that um, you're like, 
you know able to use as a talking point is around you know conscious parenting and understanding our child through their chart and it's one thing that i've actually realized recently that actually a lot of the things that my daughter is working through are things that i've passed on to her that i haven't that i wasn't able to resolve at this stage and now she's resolving them and i'm helping her with them maybe sometimes you know worsening them maybe she might say <laughs> but i can definitely see that and that's only really become apparent to me recently that there's a lot of things that she's working through that actually are mine yeah yeah absolutely i mean i see that within my daughter and you know she really forces me to be super conscious of all my you know the the things i haven't quite worked through yet you know but it, it helps your daughter she's nine okay mine's 10 so they're mm -hmm. similar ages you know and the kids these days um i don't know if your daughters are like this but my daughter me and she calls me out on everything yes <laughs> <laughs> yes my daughter is exact exactly the same and there's actually one thing even that i had recognized that we are repeating a cycle of similar to what i had with my mom and me and her are now repeating that same cycle. Um, and it's something that is so small and insignificant, but it's obviously drawn my attention to this repetition of cycles that we haven't obviously worked through the karma, me and my mom. And this is now something I'm still working through with my daughter. And it's, it, it was, it's just been fascinating for me to see how traumas and behaviors and karma and all of this can be passed down through the family because people talk about it all you need to heal yourself so you break the chain but actually seeing it in existence and seeing that happen and seeing the patterns form is like just another level it's been incredible really um definitely a bit of a, an eye-opener for me yeah yeah i find everything in life is a pattern people are patterns our relationships are patterns the more i do this the more i see just patterns everywhere and sacred geometry in general, it tells us about just the patterns and it's, 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 I mean, we could go down a whole different rabbit hole talking about patterns and how they show yeah. up, <laughs> but essentially, you know, to, for, for the listeners out there, when it comes to your karma, these are the negative patterns that show up in your life. And so for you, I see that it might be about com communication um, or speaking about, things that really matter to you, like speaking from your depth, speaking from your truth, being able to communicate that inner world that you have, um, all of that, you know? And sometimes with 21 threes, not all the time, but sometimes it even tells me that maybe they've had rough childhoods and uh, they're, they're warrior souls. So oftentimes they're faced with things in life um, that almost cause them to build up strength because as they go on in life, they're going to need that strength because they actually become advocates. They, they become the loud voices for others. So with 21 threes, I'll see them as lawyers, uh, literal advocates for patients or, you know, lobbying, things of that nature, professors, um, maybe even actors sometimes, because again, they have a stage and they have a loud voice. So for you, I mean, we're t having this conversation on a podcast, you know, so, and this is maybe just one of your platforms because you're here to express your voice in a very loud way, that deep inner knowledge that you possess, that soul wisdom that you were born with. Yeah, it's definitely very much my purpose. So I've I've had to learn how to voice it. Even whenever I first started to come into my gifts and, you know, started my spiritual path, I was so frightened of even telling people, oh, this is what I'm doing now, or this is what I'm going through. I'm having a spiritual awakening. I'm seeing things. I'm like, I was so, so closed off from even being able to be honest and authentic within myself. And that's only one aspect, I guess, of the communication with me that is um, being stifled a little bit. But even through, whenever I think about through my whole life, you know, you talk a lot about communication being in my chart. There's really been a lot of times whenever I have not felt downtrodden, but when I look back to my childhood and I was from the time when, you know, if you were with your parents or your grandparents, I'm using that example specifically because I would have been with my mum and my grandmother a lot. He's still here with me, my, my grandmother. Um, but it was very much, you know, children should be seen and not heard. You know, you didn't have a voice. 
So it's in my chart and it was drilled into me in childhood as well that my voice didn't really matter. Like I didn't have a voice. So to overcome that, because we've had the social conditioning and it's just, it's very hard to break away from and to then start to speak your truth and to um, speak up and challenge people and to understand that actually your voice does deserve to be heard. And I, I can fully expect that I'm not the only person that has experienced that in life. But what I find is fascinating that it's in this chart. <laughs> I'm just like, ah! I can't believe that it's like in here, you know, something that was so profound for me. Um, <laughs> That, that that's in there and even communicating from an honest place and being honest with people you know being authentic and being honest with you know without e without being a shit you know when you're trying to be a gentle soul and still speak your truth um and i think that that's probably a lesson that a lot of people have to learn as well that's definitely been something that um i've experienced so it's just it's just incredible it's just i'm just like I just have no words. <laughs> it's just fascinating how it is all picked up on here. Um, it's incredible. And obviously, if we were in the reading together, you would probably be touching on a lot more specific stuff, I would imagine, as well. Plus, you would oh, be nice. using your, your gifts alongside this. So it's not just what's in this chart. It's not what's in this star. It's everything. There's like a lot of other things that would come into play yeah yeah no absolutely you're right and you touched on something really interesting with this three in particular um the three is growing up oftentimes they feel not seen mm -hmm. right and so you just said you know the, the motto in your household was children's are um to seem to be seen but not heard but but essentially not seen like, like you're just you know you feel like you're irrelevant so the threes oftentimes are either shy or they hide in their shell or again, they're just not seen. Now, remember, we choose our parents. So you chose to have this experience because part of what you're here to work through is understanding, yes, you are so worthy of being on that stage and having your voice heard. And that's, that's the journey. And you spoke to all of that. So I'm like, yeah, and that's literally sitting in your physical karma. Like, this is what you were born into. Yeah. This is going to be one of your biggest challenges in life. It doesn't end at 35. Most people don't work through their karma by 35, right? Some, some unique souls are here and they're like, okay, let me just work through all of this. But that's not the case for most of us. So. Yeah. Honestly, I keep getting to a stage and I think, well, surely, surely I'm done. Surely I'm finished. But there's always something else that's thrown at me. Um, so it's it can be it can be a challenge. But yeah, wouldn't it be so nice if we were just done by the age of 35? And then that's it. We can just kick back for the rest. <laughs> yeah, well, I would say that age is 40 because at 40 is actually yeah this other like when we turn 40, we step into this next um, uh, what's the word like consciousness level. And 40 is almost like a reset. So if you can do as much of this work that you can by 40, at least that's how it was for me. But I also know 40 is that magical number. It Life really does flow differently. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's good to know as well. That's quite promising. Mm -hmm. So what is this spiritual karma? What does that connect to then? Yes. So the spiritual karma is a little bit more about your, like, again, your inner world and um, the 21 three, like, this is what you were born into the family that wasn't going to see you or, you know, hear you all of that. And that was your existence. The moment you're born the 11 two, I mean, it also starts to play out, but again, this is more about um, your own understanding of your own internal world and just uh, right. It's a little bit different, but, in many ways, it still plays out similarly because most of us aren't going through life saying, oh, well, this must be my external. This is my internal. So the way that the 11-2 shows up is the 11-2 is a sponge frequency. Okay, so and when I'm um, doing readings, I'll often ask people with 11-2s if they consider themselves to be an empath because 11-2s, they feel everything. They're very sensitive, very, very sensitive to the point where they... Um, actually assimilate other people's dysfunctional patterns into their own being. But they don't always realize that that's what they're doing, especially as children. And so what happens with 11-2s is they'll absorb 
other people's, like I said, the, the dysfunctional patterns, and then they'll go to start build their lives based off of these dysfunctions yeah. and not even realize it until, until with 11 twos, there's another theme of losses. So usually with an 11 two, something will happen. There'll be some sort of a loss or a trigger. And all of a sudden they'll be shocked and they'll say, wait a second, is this even my own truth? What's going on here? Mm-hmm. And so they're meant to sort of have this awakening moment. And from that point on, start to deconstruct everything that they've absorbed that is not theirs because their purpose in life here is to build their own solid structure from their truth, their inner truth, their life philosophy. What do they believe in, right? What matters to them? And this usually shows up from their own life experience to that point, you know? And so oftentimes 11 twos feel lost. Like if they haven't quite, because right, you can imagine during the deconstruction phase, it's like, okay, so if this isn't true, but I don't quite know what my own truth is, you know, and they're sort of in that gray space in the middle. Um, so they can feel a little bit lost. So again, theme of losses, um, theme of building, they're here to build and rebuild. Um, and initially in life, again, it shows up as this very sensitive uh, frequency that maybe people who take things a little too personally and just absorbing other people's crap. So, yeah. It's just, it's amazing. It's amazing the amount of information that you're able to get from this. So everybody, you need to go and get a soul contract reading from Galliana because this is just, honestly, my my mind is just blown with this. Like I've always been super interested in the soul contract anyway and the sort of information that it would contain. But you've really taken this to another level for me and Mm -hmm. understanding actually the a bit more just about how it's all planned out and the process that really goes into it, that it's not like we just decided, oh, I'll have that. You know, there's been a great deal of thought has went into creating this. You know, it serves a a major purpose. It's not like we just woke up one morning and the soul woke up and was like, yeah, you know, I'll have two kids. I just fancy, I just fancy having two kids and, you know, I'll decide that I'm going to be a builder or whatever it might be. Do you know what I mean? There's actually... It's almost like everything really serves a purpose and the things that are in our contract are there for a reason. And, you know, we we just need to see past the, the everyday, really, to understand the bigger picture. And it just makes everything just seem a, a little bit more palatable, really. And it, it, this is just incredible. Yeah, I thank you. Thank you for, you know, for saying that. And, and I agree. It's just... To me, this was life changing when Mm -hmm. I came across this and, you know, looked at my own soul contract and it was so much so life changing that I was like, I need to do this. I need to do this for other people. It just answers so many questions. It allowed me to forgive. It allowed me to move forward. It, It all of a sudden my life just made sense. Yeah, I think that that's what a lot of people actually worry and wonder about. It's like, okay, well, I've had this ex- experience in my life where I've had this happen to me, this hardship or this challenge or, you know, this learning, whatever it might be. But we're thinking of it as like some sort of a punishment sometimes, or, you know, we could be thinking of it as like, oh, the universe hates me. Um, you know, I'm never going to get forward in life, but there's always a reason why we're experiencing what we are. You know, it's happening for us it's not happening to us it's happening for us so there's always some sort of a a a lesson to learn and i i do try and preach that to people actually as well that no matter what challenge you experience in life it's always important to look for the lesson you know always look for the lesson because the quicker you can find the lesson and see what it is that you need to learn the easier it is going to be for you to move forward the quicker you know you'll move forward because if you don't learn it it's going to come back and it will keep coming back until you've learned it and it might come back in different forms you know with that bad relationship with that bad partner and um, if you're having to learn self-worth then that that person is going to come back in a different form each and every time they may look different but the lesson is still going to be the same and that will be reverberated through our whole life yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah honestly this is amazing um 
so is there anything because you said obviously this doesn't change you know the, the chart is what it is but i guess there is different information well I'm, I'm assuming i don't know i will ask you obviously because you're using your spiritual gifts alongside this chart and you're getting information that people you know somebody obviously could do this chart and they could sit at home and they could work out oh this means that that means this but without that additional layer that you bring through um i guess there's going to be a limit on the information that we can receive um so the information I'm guessing in the chart will always remain the same to a certain extent, but that additional layer that you're able to add to it will probably evolve and change over time. Yes, yes, so that, that's a great question. So yeah, let me talk about that for a minute. So I do have, um, again, I do the readings one-on-one. -on -one. Um, mm -hmm. And when I am talking to somebody, of course, we're looking at the chart. I mean, this is the roadmap of your entire life, but we also tend to talk about what's relevant for them in the moment, right? So if somebody is stuck somewhere or they're having issues with somebody, I mean, there's, there's you know, different points in life. People are going to have different things to address. However, having said that, I also have a... Um, digital soul contract product so people can literally get their chart from me and then i have videos explaining all the different frequencies and the testimonials i've gotten from that people come back and they're like oh my god you just like my entire life like now everything makes sense so i i think even just going through the numbers not i think but i know <laughs> is gonna give you so much knowledge and information that even just that in itself without me being present is powerful. But you're right, the, the, so, so it's two different experiences is what I wanna say. Not that one's better than the other. I would almost wanna say if you get the digital soul contract, um, you can go much deeper into your chart because in the readings, you know, I only have an hour and if I get somebody who's really chatty, I, I'm just not gonna be able to explain every single aspect yeah. of everything, right? So we again, we get into a conversation and it's meaningful and powerful, but every reading is different and unique versus yeah. if you just want, like, give me the black and white, like the bold point of everything, then the digital um, reading is very powerful for that. Okay, that's good to know. So, because um, I was sort of wondering, like, is this the sort of thing that people would come back to you for, like, every six months? Or is it they have the reading, it makes sense, it's done? Or, you know, like you said there, they, they get the they get the um, the chart done and then you provide them with the digital information that they can then do it themselves. So I guess on that basis for the digital one, there wouldn't be a requirement for them to, to come back to you at a later stage because they have all of the information there is that right yeah i mean so people might come back to me if they want a family reading if they want yeah. to optimize their name because that is mm -hmm. something that i do is help people optimize their name for them to carry um you know the most powerful frequency so my name galiana akin that's optimized off of my birth name to give me the best vibrations to, to you okay. know Live, live an amazing life, <laughs> right? That's, that's really interesting because I was just about to ask you, okay, so what does that what does that involve? What does that mean? So that's a, that's fascinating that you do that. I love the idea of like a family chart without mm -hmm. doubt. Um, and I can see how that would work, especially if you have karma and challenging relationships even as well within the family that you're trying to work out. Um, and I just, I think that that could probably be used for so much. I imagine even in relationships, does it help like people who are in relationships as well, like two partners that want to get something like that done to understand their relationship and each other better? Yes, absolutely. So I can do relationship readings. Um, what I can't see in these charts though is, is this my divine soulmate? Yeah. The chart isn't going to tell me that, but the chart will give me the dynamics. I might see a karmic connection. I, if there's a karmic connection, I will definitely see it. Yeah. Um, or a karmic bond of some sort, uh, which again isn't even always bad. So sometimes the karmic mm -hmm. connections are painful, but sometimes they're actually beautiful. 
Yeah, it's funny because um, you touched on that. So one way that Spirit will give me information through is by telling me if something is destined or not. And to me, destined is something that it's written in the stars, it's in the contract, it's set to occur. So that might be a connection between two specific souls. And I think we have this in our head that, oh, it's destined, it's supposed to be, it's going to be magical, it's going to be wonderful. But actually, just because it's set to occur doesn't mean that it's going to be wonderful and magical. It means that that connection serves a purpose it might be an abusive relationship that you're going to learn lots of lessons from and it's going to propel you on to a spiritual awakening for all I know all I'm being told is that it's something that is sort of set in stone as it were um so it's it's interesting how our concept of destiny is like oh it's going to be magical it's amazing um but actually that's not that's not the case always yeah yeah that's not the case most of the time I yeah, would <laughs> yeah. Uh, but i start into relationships um i can also look at business names right so okay like, like if you let's say you know bef- what came to you and you're like hey galliana i'm launching this other podcast or i want to write a book um can we run the frequencies of this mm-hmm. i can i can easily do that um I mean, I can pretty much run the frequency of of any your address. You know, I mean, people aren't coming to me for these things, but I'm just saying how um, you know that is something I could do. But yeah. like the reason that people would come to me for, I would say, the family reading is usually the most, um, especially parents. They're really interested in that, and then um, the name optimization, the business. The the, the other thing though is because I I do healings, and so after a reading. Uh, Because everything I do is I work with the soul and everything. The purpose of everything that I do is to realign people to their purpose, to awaken them Mm -hmm. to it and realign them to it. So um, healings, people will come to me for that. And that isn't necessarily something that I, um, like if you look at my TikTok, you're not going to necessarily see about my healings, right? Because the soul contract is really where I stand strong and firm. Um, but I do healings as well. And that's, again, more of like once I've connected with somebody and they're like, yeah, let's do this, you know, mm-hmm. so that would be a reason people would come back to me. Yeah, that's amazing because I hadn't really thought about the impact of the names of things. Certainly not whenever I have thought about the business podcast the you know this so that like all of these things that we attach names to and actually those names do have some sort of a meaning and I I hadn't thought about that I would wonder why more people don't do that with their business but hopefully that will change once they listen to this podcast and they'll be thinking hmm I had that idea maybe I'll maybe I'll get the name checked um mm-hmm. and this is just incredible so you obviously this is your your life's work now this is really what you focus on how can people find you like where can they find you online yeah no wonderful question so um i'm on tiktok as soul contracts practitioner and it's soul underscore contracts underscore practitioner uh, and the same exact name on instagram Mm -hmm. Uh, i think if you just start typing it in i come up and they'll see my name, Geliana. And yeah. um, of course, th- my website is yoursoulscontract.com and souls has an S, so yoursoulscontract.com. Um, again, all of this is very optimized, you know, so <laughs> wonderful frequencies. That's why it is what it is. Um, so people can find me there. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much all over the internet. I get most of my clients online and, you know, I have mm-hmm. people from all over the U.S. and all over the world that come into me. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I've seen you quite a, quite a bit on TikTok and it was that that actually prompted me to reach out in the first instance because I just thought this is amazing what you're talking about. There's so much that I think we just don't know and I, I'm really pleased that we've been able to get this recorded today. Um, I'm just, I'm honored to have had you on the show. No, well, I love this conversation. I'm so glad you reached out to me. <laughs> It's brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time. And I will expect wonderful things, more and more wonderful things to come from you. Um, And I hope that the listeners as well have found this very, very informative today. And I expect that there'll be a few coming and booking in for, for some readings as well. 
would love to connect with some of your community. Absolutely. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you're able to, please rate the show or leave feedback on your chosen podcast player. You can also visit the podcast website. Simply head across to the happy show, and you can also find me on the socials by searching for at Gemma Lonsdale Guru. <laughs>